Yeah, I'll, I'll try to bring it. Hey, Kevin, I, I wanted to ask when you reviewed the, the film from the uh, UVA game, the, those three points shots that you guys hit, um, how much of it was great ball movement? How much of it was hitting contested? Were, were they open shots where there's a mix? What did you see there? I thought it was great, Mike. I thought it was great coaching on my part. Um, we we ran a couple of those plays, especially the one at the end of the half where Jericho hit. Uh, I, I thought it was a mix of everything. You know, it was one of those nights where we were really shooting the ball well. Uh, we made some contested shots, um, but also we had some great looks also. I thought, you know, when you when Jericho and both Tequavion are shooting the ball well, it seems to kind of, you know, flow through our team. And, you know, Casey made a couple of them. Um, Breon stepped up and made a shot. And so I just thought, you know, it was a good night. It was a mixed bag of we've got a couple tough ones that we made late in the shot clock. And also we had some that, you know, obviously we ran some plays. And uh, I remember the one in transition where um, Sebron drove and kicked it to Casey on the left wing and he made one. So I think it was a mixture of both. We had a really, really good night shooting the basketball. Darian's been such a, a great scorer for you guys. He didn't have a huge points game, but he, he kind of took what was there. How important was his play uh, in keeping everything else flowing? You know, I think it's important. You know, you know when you're him and he's played so well early in the year, and especially non-conference and then the beginning of the ACC, people are game planning against him. Um, you know, he's been one of the best touch, uh, paint touch guys in the country. And so, you know, the advantage is if he's a willing passer, that means that we're going to get some open shots for some other guys. And I thought he's been lately, he's done a great job of finding some guys when he couldn't get all the way to the paint. And so that was important. Uh, you know, he's having a good year, and you can tell a guy's having a good year when he, he's adjusted to the way people are playing him. And that, I think that's important for our team. Thank you. And your energy is great. Thank you, man. I, I, I just want – I don't want you to ever get on here and say Josh had more energy energy than me this morning. Thanks, Mike. Uh, we'll go to James Henderson. James, go ahead. Hey, Kevin. Both you guys uh, – both teams shot the three ball well in that game, but I think you were plus 12 in the paint, held them to just 22 paint points. Watching the game back, you know, what, what contributed to winning that area for you guys? Um, uh, we were, James, we were really scrappy in the game. Um, you know, it's probably one of our best, best, not only offensive game, but best defensive game. I thought we were scrappy. I thought for the first time, not, I shouldn't say the first time, but I thought we played NC State basketball where we affected the game because we were able to get a lot of deflections and we were able to get our hands on a lot of basketballs and we challenged a lot of shots. I thought we did a good job in that. We mixed it up how we played a little bit defense at times. Um, you know, we were switching you know, one through four. And then, you know, we tried our best to, you know, with the mover blocker that Tony and those guys run, you know, that that style, that system, and those plays could really hurt you. And it did early on in the uh, game. I thought we gave up too many open shots. I think they started off making five threes, and we made some adjustments and didn't give up so many open shots. But I thought, you know, we were a little bit more scrappy and, and active um, than we've done in the last few games. Thanks. Thank you, James. Uh, Jonas Pope, go ahead. Coach, um, everyone obviously knows about your big three when, when Tequavion and Jericho and Sebron are scoring. You guys obviously do well. But – the last couple of games, has it has Casey's emergence, him getting back healthy, has that been a big difference as well on both ends of the floor for the team? You know, we've had, you know, I want you to think about throughout the season, you know, Thomas Allen didn't play well early in the year. And then after Christmas, he came back and he started to give us great minutes and started to play well. Casey Marcel was playing really good basketball up until he had an ankle injury. And since then, you know, he's, you know, people don't understand how much that takes out of you. You don't have lift. You can't shoot the ball well. You don't drive it well. And so, you know, he's back healthy, and he started getting back healthy, you know, probably right towards the Virginia Tech game. Uh, but he gives us – here's a young man who was playing, you know, very good basketball um, for us, and he got a little frustrated because he couldn't perform the way he was performing early in the year. And I think, you know, him getting back healthy has certainly helped our team because – you know, he's probably our best on the ball defender. He's got great size, you know, knows how to play, you know, coming from UVA and the way they play defense, you know, he's certainly a really good defensive player. And 
done a good job. And so I'm just glad to see him back playing basketball, good basketball, because certainly uh, he gives us another guy that can score the ball. Um, Jonas, early in the year, he was averaging right around 14, 15 points a game before his injury. And he's listed at like 6'3", but it seems like he's always attacking the paint on both ends, I mean, attacking the rebounds and driving to the paint. Is it safe to say he kind of plays bigger than, than his size? Well, it is. Um, you know, we, I, I try to make real sizes, Jonas. So, you know, I, the way he plays, if I could have listed him at six five, I would. But we took whatever UVA had, and I didn't want to increase it a little bit because I thought it would make us look bad. But no, he he plays a lot. He plays a lot bigger. He's he's got some toughness. Um, you know, um, he's he's a long, athletic guy that can make plays. And, you know, I think he's at his best when he's mixing his game up instead of settling for threes. And when you look at the UVA game, I thought he had a great steal, which he got on the transition. He drove the ball twice. We had a mismatch. He drove it and, you know, got a couple layups. And, you know, he he, he scored in different ways. And, and that's what helps our team right now. Brett Friedlander, go ahead. Kevin, I've got kind of a big picture question. Um, when you're recruiting a transfer, how how different is the recruiting process in, in terms of what you look for than when you're recruiting a kid out of high school? You know, you're looking for fit with your program, but also, you know, how it meshes. I mean, how, how does, what's the big difference? Well, I think it's I think you got to you got to find number one. It always has to be fit. And, and I say that because I'm, and I'm not just saying from a basketball standpoint, I think personalities have to blend uh, socially. You got to make sure that a young man can come into your program and, and, you know, not disrupt. You know, a lot of times um, every transfer is not for everyone. And so, you know, doing your homework on guys, you got to figure out if they can fit the school academically, you know, socially, will they survive in this area? And then from a basketball standpoint, are they capable of playing um, in our system, I can I'll talk about Casey, for example, you know, we felt like that we were getting a guy who had already transferred from a really winning program. I think that's also important. And, you know, he knew how to play. Uh, I think our system is a little bit different than what obviously you guys noticed that when UVA played and plays. Um, but we thought we were getting a great kid that was low maintenance and good locker room guy, great student. And, you know, more importantly, you know, we had to go back a little bit to his high school days to kind of figure out, all right, does he fit what we're trying to accomplish here on in our program? And he's been a perfect transfer for us um, because of those things. And and then with the new rules where you don't have to sit out a year, what kind of challenges that obviously you get the instant gratification of getting him to play right away. But what's the challenge of, of you know meshing a guy when you have to do it immediately instead of having a year to integrate him into the program? Yeah, it's it it'll it um uh, it a lot of times um Brett it depends on the individual, and some guys you know obviously can pick up a system quick and they become you know part of the your um, chemistry really quick, but sometimes it takes some guys a little bit longer. And you know I, I was looking at some the other day, and our transfers in this league have been very very successful, um and you know I think that's a that's that's uh a good sign for the coaches who are recruiting in this league because it feels like that everybody's recruiting guys that fit their system and, and you know, obviously are not chemistry killers. Every transfer is not for everybody. Um, I think it's important that you have to do your homework and make sure that, you know, you're getting somebody that brings something positive to your team. Thanks, Kevin. Have a great week. Thanks, Brett.